Welcome to the GAC Weekly. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. I'm glad that you are with me today. And we are journeying through the GAC to get this 10th season going. And we're getting to visit with a lot of folks from each of the 12 member schools of the Great American Conference. Our stop today is Bethany as we get to visit with Kevin Ingram, who is the head volleyball coach at Southern Nazarene University. And Coach, by the way, uh, a friend also, and I like being able to say that about so many of the, the coaches in the Great American Conference. It's just such um, a good group of people, and I'm, I'm so thankful to get to, to work with all of you. But, man, you got your sport completed last year. I mean, you were able to get all the way done, all the way through. And uh, the flip side of it, though, is it's probably going to look a little bit different now in the fall coming in. So where are you all at Southern Nazarene? How's it going? You know, it's been a, a different, um, a different time, a different age. Just, th just things are different right now. But um, it's also been good. It's given us a time to kind of slow down. I know for me personally, being a coach and uh, always running here and there, and then I also run our facilities and that kind of thing. It's probably the first time in twenty some odd years that I've been a coach and been a part of this university that um, it's been a lot more normal what a normal person probably works nine to five i mean i have my evenings free i'm not going to run and go do this or on a phone here that kind of thing i'm able to take care of things during the day so that's been kind of nice been able to spend some time more time with the family uh, more time um, just doing some other things that i don't typically get to do so it's been good in that sense but definitely miss our players miss our miss our athletes um those are things that as a coach, they drive us. And um, when that stuff's not going on and not being able to have practice and not being able just to have the interaction between our players, we miss that stuff for sure. And so, um, so it's just different, but, um, but it's also been good in some ways too. And I think um, I've tried to take advantage of this time, um, which I'm sure other coaches have too in that sense, but definitely ready to get things back, to, uh, back going again. And, and, and I'm thankful, obviously we didn't, miss our season i mean our season was completed so we didn't have that but man i feel for those sports that were right in the middle or just getting started and their whole season was taken out from underneath them basically um the only part that really impacted us is we missed some of our off season um things that we would normally have we were getting ready to start our off season practices actually we'd had two and missed all of our off-season scrimmages and those kind of things which are really helpful in getting ready for the next season especially in a year personally where we transitioning some new setters, some new players and positions to be able to see them. We just didn't get that time this year, but the NCAA has made some, some rule changes this summer that allowing us to kind of still have some of that uh, work with our players if they ask and they want to come in that kind of thing, which has been kind of nice to, to have some of that. So I think as we get closer to season, some of our players will start taking more advantage of that stuff. Boy, that's uh, that's right. That's a big part, big part of your year. And, you know, at, you're a regular in Hot Springs, of, of course, with the Great American Conference Volleyball Postseason Tournament. So, we, yeah, I, I was looking at that. We may have to be looking at our programs a, a little bit more intently to get to see some of the new names and, and faces that, yeah. that you'll be bringing, uh, you know, if you all make the tournament this year. Yeah, I mean, our um, I will definitely look different in the sense of a lot of new players coming in, which, I mean, every school just depends on the year. Uh, we didn't graduate a lot, but we've added a lot. <laughs> um, just been kind of one of those years. Um, it's been crazy for me in the sense that you would think during this kind of time that it would be hard to recruit, but actually it was just the opposite for us. Uh, we had a lot of success recruiting, not just for this upcoming season, but also even for our 2021 class. So, um, and I don't know if it's just kids are – seeing I don't want to be at home because they've been stuck at home and ready to make those decisions and that kind of thing. Or um, it's just uh, they're more without the club systems going and that kind of thing, their fear of not being seen as much. They made some of those decisions a little faster than normal. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's probably a combination of things, but uh, I'm definitely excited about our future and definitely we hope to continue to be a, a permanent resident every year in hot springs during that week of the conference tournament. That's where we want to be at for sure. Well, I know I've certainly got used to seeing you there and it's always a, a pleasure to get to, to watch you and your team come in there at the bank OZK arena. Speaking now with Kevin Ingram, who is the head volleyball coach at Southern Nazarene, but also the facilities manager. You know, you talked about that 
Uh, Kevin, I was visiting with a former Southern Nazarene coach the other day, Shane Pavin, who was uh, uh, worked with the basketball team, assistant on the basketball team, and he was talking about his his short time there, but uh, also the Oklahoma City Thunder at the time had been using the Southern Nazarene facilities there to get some practice in. This is you know way back when. Uh, mm-hmm. There are so many things that, that you have to look at. What, what are a couple of places or a couple of things that, that use those, those facilities besides just you all? Well, during those, kind, those years, I mean, the Hornets were here for, I think, two years um, when they were displaced out of, the, out of the hurricane there and all that. We had them here, and then they left and went back. And then when the Thunder, Oklahoma City Thunder came in and they first came in, they didn't have a place, and so they contacted us. And so they were here for a year while they were building their facility. So we get those kinds of odd things. We also get NBA teams that practice here occasionally just because we've done some of that. So they know we've done that. And so we'll get some odd calls here and there. But other things that we do in our facility, obviously, we host all kinds of SNU events, our commencements, graduations, um, different banquets. Um those kinds of things, but we also host state high school tournaments, uh, whether it be volleyball, basketball, those kinds of things. When those things fit into our schedule, um, we're doing those things as well. So, and then when we get the opportunity to host any of our own tournaments, then we're doing that as well. So, um, so there's a lot to do with this, the scheduling side of things. And that's uh, just an addition to what I do on the volleyball side is just kind of maintaining our schedule and uh, what that kind of looks like on a day-to-day basis with practices to, to games and then obviously my job also is to kind of safeguard what space we need for our practices and our teams to be able to use our facilities as well as our general students that want to get in here from time to time too so i understand well i see that ball cap you're wearing and i i can tell that you uh you well wear lots of hats uh, <laughs> Definitely, figuratively, you know, speaking about right now, but uh, clearly there are lots of hats that you wear. I, Southern Nazarene had a little bit of uh, good news within the last week or two. Coach Adam Bohotch, the men's basketball coach, recognized as one of the 50 impactful coaches uh, for Division Two. I mean, just great things like that that seem to be happening there on campus for you all the time. And congratulations to Coach Bohotch, too. What a great representation for the athletic department. Hundred percent. I mean, uh, Adam's done an unbelievable job um, in his tenure of being here. Um, it's it's amazing because I saw new coach Bohach when he came in as a a graduate assistant and kind of worked his way and was an assistant and then he left and then came back. So I've seen his whole career so far, and for him to have had the success he's had, um, really felt horrible for his team because they were in a position last year to make a run to to maybe win the whole thing i mean had the the talent and the ability to do it and just got cut short i know they left the day to go to the national tournament and got an hour or two down the road and got the call you got to come back that's all been canceled and so um that was tough tough to hear for them and tough to hear for those guys not being able to finish that season out um that's that's a tough thing but um, so much success that he's had and um and obviously i I think he would say just like i would say i mean our success as coaches all depends on the players that um we recruit and how they do and how they continue to improve and all of his guys have done a great job of buying into his program and what he has tried to build and, and he's had a great support staff too, coach Mahoney that works with him as well as other coaches he's had in the past. Um, they've done a great job in helping him build that program. And, um, and that's a great honor for him to be one of the 50 impactful coaches. Um, you can't get any better than that. So um, he's done a great job. And he's another one of those coaches that, as I mentioned earlier, you just enjoy visiting with. He's a, he is a great guy all the way around. We appreciate him. And, uh, representing the Great American Conference well. You know, uh, Coach Ingram, Kevin, your your volleyball team then, schedule is going to look a little bit different now than it did, uh, you know, two or three weeks ago with, with the Division II mandate across the board, some lessening in the maximum number of, of contests. So you're looking at uh, pretty much a, a conference schedule throughout. Talk about your schedule, and that's going to be kind of tough. There's no way to break into it. I mean, you, you have those – those quote unquote meaningful games right off the bat. You know, it is going to be a little different um, with our, with the GAC and how we've scheduled over the year. We're, we're one of those sports. That's not a double round Robin. Now basketball, they will be a double round Robin. So they're basically their entire schedule 
is basically all conference games where we have a little bit of flexibility. We'll have four dates that we can choose what we want to do at those dates. I think the majority of us will try to get into some tournaments because we can maximize those dates. That way we can play a couple of games in a day. And so, but ultimately our schedule could be cut anywhere from six games. I mean, six dates, but whether you, some of those times you play a, a try match or that kind of thing. So you're looking at at least six games that are off our schedule that we normally would have. And a lot of those are teams like university of central Oklahoma, Arkansas, Fort Smith, Cameron's um, those teams that are more local, but other good solid division two teams that we typically get to play. We're not getting to play those this year. So, um, so a lot of our focus and, and time will be spent even more so on the conference level, obviously. Um, we'll have those first couple of weeks. We'll get to hopefully play some tournaments if those hold hold together. And then after that, we'll have a lot more time between games that we normally don't have because normally we're throwing a non-conference in here and there. Um, so it will be a little different, but I think um, – hopefully be better for our athletes too, in the sense that uh, give them some recovery time for, um, after some matches, especially a, a long weekend trip to Arkansas. We're playing two on a Friday, Saturday, and then coming back. We're not coming back and then trying to play a Tuesday game all the time. A lot of times it'll be not till Thursday or maybe not till the next weekend. So, so prep time, um, recovery time, all that could be really beneficial to us. Um, I can't say it'll be something that I'll like. <laughs> um, I'd much rather have those other games. Game experience always plays out and helps us at the end, but um, it's what everybody's going to be facing this year, and it's just going to be different. It's something we um, will adjust to, and um, but we're still looking forward to just the opportunity to play and get back into practice, have the students on campus. That's the main thing. I mean, I, whatever it is, it is. Uh, we just want to be able to play, and I know that's what our team – would say too. As long as we're playing coach, it doesn't matter. Um, and that's what they want. They just want to play. So, well, coach, uh, you had an opportunity to play in the Great American Conference postseason tournament numerous times. And uh, it's always a, you know, a privilege to get to see a Southern Nazarene team there, won the championship a few years back. That uh, you've been a part of the league now for, you know, since obviously since Southern Nazarene has joined uh, right after the beginning. GAC now in its 10th year. Can you talk about that? It's, it's definitely a conference that is, is growing, and uh, it's a rising tide of, of competition level, I think, across the board. 100%. I mean, it's a conference. I mean, like you said, we kind of came in after it was uh, put together a few years after that, but um, we've had some great success personally as a program. Our basketball teams have too, um, as well as some of the other sports teams. Um, and I think all of us are are striving just to continue to to be better and to make our conference better. As you get better and the teams around you get better, then we get more recognition on the national level. And so I know from speaking from the volleyball side of things, our volleyball conference has definitely made some strides in the last few years. And that's the part that this schedule thing is a little different. We're not getting to play that non-conference as much this year and getting out, letting our teams match up against some of those other teams. That's a little bit of a disadvantage this year, um, especially with some steps that we've made in the last few years. I mean, Harding went down two years ago and, and won a game um, in the first round of the national tournament. I mean, that was huge for us on the volleyball side. So um, all those things are things that we're constantly trying to build. And I think our conference is getting stronger. Um, some of our sports are stronger than others, um, but ultimately we all want to be competitive at the national level. Um, if you don't want to be, then you're not in the right sport. <laughs> you're not doing the right thing coach or career wise. Um, coaches want to be competitive and they want to move on, not just to the conference tournament. That's the first goal every single year, especially in division two do well, be able to compete in the conference tournament, have a chance to win it. But we also have bigger desires and that's to be able to compete and win national championships. And we know those are even tougher to do um, with the amount of teams that are in the division two division. Um, but it's something that our conference is getting better as a whole, having 10 years under our belt. That's just something that's just gives us more experience and something to continue to build on. Well, you have built well within the conference and your program is a great Program and, and it's, again, always enjoyable to get to see you and your program come hot springs time. So uh, success to you this season as, as you get ready for that. And I really appreciate you stopping by and joining us here on the GAC Weekly and talking a little bit Southern Nazarene Athletics today, Coach Kevin Ingram. 
Hey, we appreciate it, Joey. It's always good to talk to you too. Good to see you. I'm glad you're doing well. And we appreciate the work that you do for our conference 100%. Thank you, sir. And we are well and healthy in my household. And I'm very thankful for that. Appreciate everyone watching the GAC Weekly. And please be sure and subscribe to this YouTube channel. By the way, Midwest Sportsnet, the home of the GAC Weekly. For Kevin Ingram, I'm Joey McWilliams. God bless you. Have a great day.